Hi, and welcome back to another Amazon selling video. If you're new to my channel, my name is Nikki Kirk, and I've been selling on Amazon doing retail arbitrage for six years. New this year, I launched the Your Selling Podcast. You can find it wherever you listen to podcasts, as well as watch full videos here on YouTube at Your Selling Podcast. I love it so much because I'm able to chat with other Amazon sellers face-to-face -face, because we do it over video, and I'm always learning something in every episode, but not only that, I'm always learning something every time that I talk to another seller. It's why I have meetups throughout the year this year, and it's why I started the community on Facebook to begin with, because talking to other sellers really can change your Amazon business. You can learn a lot by watching YouTube or just going it alone, figuring it out on your own, but you're really doing yourself a disservice if you're not talking to other Amazon sellers because you learn so much. Just asking questions, observing what other people are talking about, getting into a community really is everything. If you want to join my BOLO community, the Retail Arbitrage BOLO group, you can do so at yoursellingguide.com slash BOLO, or it's linked below, or you can just learn more and take a breeze through and see if you want to join it. But it is an awesome community of sellers who are in there every day chatting about Amazon, as well as sharing profitable leads. In this video, I'm going to go over my first few pallet shipments that I've done and walk you through what went right, what went wrong, and where I'm at and where I'm going to go in the future. If you are not new to my channel, I actually recorded a video sitting on a pile of dirt here. There was no building. I think it was in October 2022 talking about this is going to be the future shop. Now we've got the bones of it up. So I thought, let me do another video. So this is the first video I've ever done in the shop. It is clearly not finished. And hopefully in the next couple of weeks, it will be finished. But I thought it might be fun to do one right now. So I'm in what will soon be my shipping area. Like I'm going to have all my FBA prep behind me will or not behind me over that way will be where my desk will actually be. And then I have other plans for that side of it. But yeah, I'm really excited. So that's what I'm doing here in this weird building. But because I have been RVing around before going stationary, I could never really do pallets. Like I dabbled around here and there. I would buy from distributors, send them to a prep center, but not really ever getting fully serious about it because it's a little bit hard in an RV. And I also just really like retail arbitrage, honestly. But now that I am stationary and building this mega shop, as we're calling it, I am absolutely going to get into more of pallets and maybe wholesale with the goal of not just straight wholesaling, because as I'm going to tell you throughout this video, it's not necessarily that much cheaper to buy something from a distributor versus just buying it from Walmart. But if you can do things like bundle or make your own brand and differentiate things, there are ways to make the model work for you rather than just straight one for one buying it wholesale, selling it exactly as it is. There are many ways to buy a pallet. You can literally just Google wholesale pallets and find a bunch of different places. Places like Ollie's and Grocery Outlet, they are actually buying and bidding on pallets online, just like you can if you have the space and area to do it. So just head to Google and you can see that. That is not the pallets that I'm talking about. Those pallets are kind of mixed and you kind of sort of know what's in them. Recently, my friend Becky told me about a liquidator that she knows who bought a pallet of Squishmallows, but there's something wrong with them. They're like otherwise damaged, right? That's why the retailer couldn't sell them. And come to find out they were all just moldy. And so now this they're stuck with them. You can't return them. You know you're buying not good. So that's kind of things that happen with different pallets like that. I absolutely am going to dabble in it. I'm going to do my research. I'm going to see, like, buy the best thing I can. But I'm actually really excited to do that and see what comes. And I will definitely fill you in as I do that. But I need this to be done first. But I'm really excited for that. So there are different things. Now, what I'm talking about, the pallets I'm talking about that I've bought are from a toy distributor. And I say pallet because it ships on a pallet. This is not a small distributor. It's a massive distributor. You have to pay for the freight via truck. It gets delivered off of a truck on a pallet. That's why I'm talking pallets. And it is not necessarily cheap. There are distributors out there, like in my toy guide and my ungaining guides. I specifically have small distributors where you have small minimum orders, if a minimum order at all, because the goal of that is to get ungated. You can totally go through and look for products to buy from them, but the goal of those distributors is just to get your product get ungated and you may never buy from them again. The goal for me moving into this wholesale type model is to buy bulk of stuff that I can keep getting replanned easily from the distributor 
and send it into Amazon. So no, I'm not going to tell you who I use. I'm so sorry. I did all my research on my own and just like you will. And I actually, it's kind of like when people get mad at me when I don't share what I'm sourcing because I'm actually selling it. It's the same thing, right? I did all the work and so you can do all the work too. I'm no different than you. You can do it. I promise you, if I can do it, you can do it. So I'm not going to tell you who it is. I'm just going to apologize for that right now, but hopefully you understand why. So I ordered three palettes total to date. I'm actually getting ready to go through and order another palette this week or next week. So I first did it in August of 2022. Then I did it in, I think it was October. Then I did one in January of this year, 2023. So three palettes that I have spent money on. I learned a whole lot from that first order, which I will go through and show you because I think I went a little excited crazy and my second palette was a lot less. Let's just say that. The first thing I do is the distributor has a list of all of their inventory, the prices, the discounted prices, UPCs, all of that. So I use Tactical Arbitrage. I upload it into it. Now, Tactical Arbitrage is not cheap by any means. You might know it from doing online arbitrage, but if you're going to get into this wholesale model, it's even more expensive. But it is really cool because you can upload your spreadsheets right into it and it will match up to Amazon any UPCs that match. So that's the first thing I do. But after that, I go through and I do branch leads. So if you're in the Bolo group, you know what branch lead is, right? It's someone shared this item, but now I'm gonna look for like items. So same thing, if I see something pop up in TA and I go, oh, okay, that. Let's see what other things the distributor has by that brand because not everything's gonna match one-to-one. -one. Main reason why is a lot of things are in case packs. So when you're ordering a case pack from a distributor, it's gonna come with not just, let's say it's WWE, so that's some things I've bought from them. It's got like six characters in it. Not only that, it's got like four of one, one of another, two of one, and it, it's all different broken up. So the UPC might match for one of them, but now I have to dig and see if the other ones are gonna be worth it, or if I just say that one that's worth it isn't worth the whole loss of the other ones. So I do a lot of branch leads. Also because I wanna keep making my own bundles. So far I've made two successful ones, one kind of successful one, lots of not successful ones, but I wanna keep making those bundles. So I'm also looking for, okay, if I can get this thing, even if I can get this thing at Target, Walmart, wherever, like off the shelf and add this thing that I got from the distributor, no other sellers can really find that thing. So now I have this bundle that's kind of my own. And so I'm looking for those types of things also from both the tactical arbitrage and the manual sourcing of the distributor's website, I am then going through and researching the product as normal. Now I'm gonna tell you my first palette, I didn't research as much as I probably should have and that equaled into some bad buys. So you just research like normal, you look at Keepa, make sure it sells, make sure it's not tanking in price. One thing I do do differently with this wholesale, I'm gonna call it wholesale because it, it is and isn't. I mean, it is essentially. I'm not getting that retail, but because of this wholesale model, I am taking into account how easily I can get this product versus my normal $5 profit, 50% ROI, because that's not necessarily going to be feasible when buying wholesale. Like I said, distributor prices a lot of the times might be the same price on Amazon or even at Walmart or Target. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you can buy it any cheaper. Also with that, if I can buy something for a dollar in bulk and make two or three dollars, it's easier, right? I didn't have to go out and source it. I don't have to go out and buy more of it all around town to all the different stores. I can get it on a pallet shipped right to me. I'm factoring the, in that into my equation. So while I normally would wanna buy something that makes $5 profit and 50% ROI, I'm factoring in the ease of which I can get it into my wholesale model. Also, because I'm buying it wholesale through a distributor, there's going to be a whole lot less competition on it. So the price is going to be hopefully a little more stable. And again, that goes into my factoring in of what I want to buy. Okay, so just for like clarity to be able to show you, I got a report that I pulled with all my palette stuff as well as dollardays.com. This is not the distributor I use, but here you go. Like, I mean, it used to work for ungating. It doesn't anymore. They shut it down like a couple years ago. But anyways, it's just to be able to show you what I mean about the case packs and stuff, I'm gonna use it as a visual. So here we go. I'm gonna go to Toys and Games. 
So you can see they're kind of like no name toys that most likely aren't on Amazon. And then we've got this ballerina Barbie. Now this ballerina Barbie is selling for $10 and 63 cents. I'm pretty sure I can get it at Walmart for like seven or eight, probably even $9. So again, distributor pricing isn't great, but you see this crybabies right here, $14.66 each, and then all these different styles. So that's what I mean about the case pack. You're going to get all of these when you buy because a distributor, most distributors, there's always some that maybe won't, but most distributors will not bake break a case pack so you get everything in it. Okay, now my reporting. So I use Inventory Lab and Seller Board. I use them for completely different things. So Inventory Lab I use for the reporting, but you're gonna see it's not that great. And Seller Board I use for my numbers, my accounting, my real true profit and everything. So I use Seller Board for that. And then Inventory Lab I mostly use to ship out my FBA shipments because it makes it real easy. So I combined two, I combined the SKU profitability and then also I pulled on seller board my sales from the pallets from when I bought them to so the time frame. I just did a seller board report, exported it. Then I had to combine them. So using a VLOOKUP, if you don't know how to do a VLOOKUP, it's an Excel thing, but it works in Google Sheets. And I did a VLOOKUP to match and make the reports combined. So I have sorted it already by gross profit here. So you can see my first item I sold 31, I got one return, and I made $180 on it, 77% ROI. I don't have any units on hand. So the seller, the inventory lab report, it tells me how many I have on hand. So I went ahead and I pulled that information in. The inventory lab report did not have the ASIN. So I had to use my SKU, do a VLOOKUP with the seller board to pull in the ASIN to then be able to match the rest of it. So unfortunately, both of them Seller board's reporting is way more robust. It tells you more information, but Inventory Lab had how many I have on hand at the moment, which was really helpful for this situation to tell you how my palette has been doing. The first item, the fourth item, and the fifth item, those were all a case pack of things that I got from the distributor. So each one, it was a case pack of eight. Each one had two. So two of the four styles. Now I only mentioned three. That's because one doesn't make any money. So I literally have a bunch of ones sitting up in my shed, hoping eventually it goes out of stock and I can send it in and make money. Otherwise I'm gonna have to list it somewhere else. It's not a big deal, but it is something more things I have to do and I have a lot of stuff to do. But anyway, so because three of them make really great profit, I'm fine buying that fourth one. In fact, I did send the fourth one in originally. It's only on the third palette that I stopped sending it in because it's not worth it even just to lose money to have it. So it's sitting in my shed right now waiting. But that's one of those things where the case pack makes sense because three of them, one sells really high, one sells kind of high, and then another one is I'm making money on it. So you can see one I made $89, the top one I made $180, another one $92. So it was worth it. And you can see the percentage here, 60, 60, and 77. It was worth it for me to buy that case pack. But that was something I had to do. So uh, Tactical Arbitrage pulled in the, the UPC for only one of them. And so I had to go ahead and look manually at what was in the photo and find the listings online. It does take a lot of time, just like on, it's no different than online arbitrage, really. But you're just looking from a distributor point of view. The number two and the number, what is that? That was another case pack. They were dolls that came, they're like special Disney dolls or whatever. And they're those toddler dolls, so they're a little bit bigger. But it came with three of one and only one of the other. The one of, that's why only when, you know when it is more expensive, it only comes with less in a case back. That's kind of how you know. So the one was more expensive, like it sold for more money than the other three. But it was worth it to buy them all. In fact, the distributor doesn't have any more of them, sadly. Otherwise, I'd still be buying them. But that was something I bought on my first palette order. I've got things like blind bags, coloring books, just little things. So the cost of goods on this one, it's coloring books. It cost me $21 and I made $58. So 278% ROI worth it all day. Unfortunately, again, they don't have it. So it's not like I can easily replen, but if I'm I'm actually spacing out my pallet orders kind of a lot because one, it was winter and it rains here in Oklahoma and I don't have the shop yet. So I was just literally had them outside of my RV, the pallet, the same day it would come. 
The good thing is I know it's coming, right? So since I put in my order, I can start my inventory lab shipment before the pallet ever arrives. So I've got that part down. And then all I have to do is put my label on, poly bag them. Um, there's a lot of cardboard boxes. So I ended up just a okay, burn pit where I burn the cardboard boxes. But because I know it's coming, it cuts down. It actually only took me, I think, six hours to do the whole shipment once the pallet came. So it's really awesome. I just have a podcast in and off I go packing it up. The prep is a lot easier. A lot of stuff will come in poly bags already, sometimes not. If the item is large and the box is weird shaped, it comes in that box that fits it already. So I can just turn around and send it right back to Amazon in that box. Some of the things I ordered were um, holiday. So these two are holiday, but I did notice that they are still selling right now. So I went ahead and ordered some more. You can see, I mean, they don't make crazy great profit, but I did make some profit on them, 32 and 29% ROI. Those are the things I'm talking about. There's things that I'm more willing to do because of the ease of it. It's all your decision, it's your business, and it's up to you, like, what is worth it to you? I know no one else can sell these or get them. I'm not no one, people can figure it out, right? But it's gonna be a lot less competition because I can't just go get more at Walmart. Now you're gonna see my profit start to dwindle as we go down the line here, so. I mentioned WWE, so here's one of the packs made $25, but then this other one, only two of them made $12. I don't know why the ROI is missing there. Now, as I go down, you see how I'm now losing money. So here are some things that went wrong. So in August, I bought some, I guess they're technically school supplies, but I thought people will buy me around. The price was great. But what happened was I'm not the only seller on them. There are other sellers who are buying from this distributor. They, for whatever reason, decided to drop the price. And so the price kept dropping, dropping, dropping. And the rank went up, 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 because I guess it was a school supply. And it was just a bad buy. It was a bad buy on my part. Will I buy them this year right now? Yes, because school supplies are about to come up, but I won't buy them after that. I ended up losing money on them and it kind of sucked. That was my first palette. I bought a lot of stuff on my first palette that I probably shouldn't have. So I made stricter buying decisions on the future palettes. Another thing is like some of them, the I bought a puzzle and it's by a brand that always gets pulled for toy compliances. And so the listing got pulled. The listing, it was there when I bought it because I make sure I know where the listing is. And then it just whoop disappeared by the time the palette got delivered. So I have it in my shed waiting for me to figure out what to bundle with it. I also didn't totally pay attention. So I got like a stationary set and the listing was not the brand. So it was like a Disney stationary set, but it didn't say Disney on it. And I didn't notice that before I bought it. So that was totally my bad, my mistake. I got too excited looking at it, seeing that it made money. Another learning that I have now learned to double check that the listing is the listing, making sure while IP complaints aren't a big deal because I'm buying them, I have an invoice. It is still annoying because even if you clear that IP, you are going to get hit again. Just the nature of Amazon, those things, it's like an automated that does keep coming after you. So I do take into effect or account IP alert when I am doing these things. So I did find another listing for that stationary set. And you can see I got 24 of them and I ended up losing $145. It only cost me 86, but probably would have been better maybe to just donate it or list it elsewhere. That's one of the things that I'm always weighing, like my time versus whatever. So sometimes I just send stuff in that I'm like, well, whatever, I'd rather just get rid of it. I don't have the time to list it somewhere else. That's all different factors, right? I'm sure you have the same, you have to factor in your time versus what you wanna do, when you can do, if you can physically do it or not, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so total cost of goods for everything that's on this report, $4,275. I actually made, out of everything, I ended out in the positive, $568 I have made from the palette. Palettes. For ROI, 13%. Not great. Not great at all. I do still have 206 on hand. So now I wanted to show you my palette orders. So the first January or no, sorry, the first palette I did, you can see I went a little crazy, $3,373 I spent. Then October, I dialed it back and just bought what I researched a little bit more for $2,000. And then in January, I bought, I've no, I have more learnings, right? 
So everything is learning. I bought almost $3,000. This is including shipment. This was like the total on my credit card bill. So for my ROI based off of what I've sold so far, I'm at like 6% ROI. Still learning. I'm not going to stop ordering pallets, but I am making smarter decisions and I'm about to do things where I'm like thinking if I can bundle this. So the bundles might not take, it might not work out, they might not sell, but it's a risk I'm willing to take because it's going to help me in the future while I keep doing this. So I'm not going to go deep because I know I can buy more. I'm just going to buy the minimum that the distributor requires for me to buy. And I'm going to go and set out about creating these bundles and seeing how it goes. So that is my palette learning so far. Hopefully this video was helpful and you got some little tidbits or got your wheels spinning of how you can grow your Amazon business. Don't forget to join the Retail Arbitrage Bolo group. It is open and we would love to have you in there. Let me know if you've ordered any pallets of any kind. Comment below. I look forward to chatting with you there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you back here for another Amazon selling video.